Greetings everyone and welcome back to another I Wish video, a series in which I look at weird, strange, and obscure f No, that's the- that's the completely different series that I do. Okay. Greetings everyone and welcome back to another video in the I Wish series, a series in which I look at things off Wish. Most of the time they're crap, but you never know. I like to think that there's a 1% chance that we might actually get something good off Wish one day, but that day has still yet to come. But anywho, I have another item. It is sold on Wish, primarily. It is also on AliExpress and probably some other sites out there, I really don't know. Mine was probably bought from Wish, however I did not get my item directly from Wish, I instead got it from cash converters. Once again, someone sold them this heap of crap, and I went into store and seen said heap of crap, and said, I will take this, so you don't have to deal with said heap of crap. Everyone's happy. I look at these items, so then you don't have to. I buy these items, so you don't have to put up with the hassles, and the troubles, and the problems, and the just jankiness of these things. And basically to say, don't buy anything off Wish, to be honest. You can buy a few little small things, as I've said. Any item that is worth over $10 on Wish is probably not worth it whatsoever. But anyways, let's get into a brief little story. Oh, might have broken that. That's... I mean, that's already broken anyways. Uh, this is the S20 Ultra that I had a look at a couple of months ago on my iWish series. I'll cut it up here for you all to have a, have a squiz at if you want to. It's up to you. And uh, I killed this device. And uh, this was off Wish. Since the filming of that video, I actually got to test out an S20 Ultra. And I hated it. <laughs> it was... One of the most terrible phones I've ever used was the Exynos version. The cameras were just not up to par, the battery life was terrible, and just overall just wasn't a good phone for me. And that is basically the shortest review of a phone you're ever going to get. But anyways, long story short, I didn't really like the S20 Ultra, and the name S20 Ultra has just been in the back of my mind ever since. So when I seen this phone that we're going to have a look at, at my local cashies, I kind of went, well, let's see if it beats this one first of all. Number two, is this possibly going to be the highest spec welcome device we're ever going to have a look at on this channel? I have no idea. So I purchased it, and we're going to have a look at it today. So this one can just go away. Also, there's a link in the description for all of the system files that I pulled off this thing. I did share it with someone, and they had a good look through it, and there's a lot of wallpapers and sounds and videos and stuff. I'll leave that in the description. Feel free to go through that. I just went to ADB and used ADB pull system and got all of it. And we can start having a look at the listing for the item that we're going to be having a look at today, and it is this right here. The 2021 new punch screen. Always got to love that punch screen. Galaxy S30 Ultra 7.2 inch smartphone, 4G, 5G smartphone, ultra thin, 12 plus, 512 gig fingerprint, unlock mobile phone, dual card phone, support TF card, fashion smartphone. You got all that? Good. Okay. Whew. It is currently $187 Australian with $16 shipping. I'll display all the other currencies here for you all just in case you wanted to know. And it also gives you an idea on how much these shitty things actually cost. Regarding the title, I've just realized that it says Galaxy. Not Galaxy. It's Galaxy. Of course it is. But the picture shows what looks to be an S20 Ultra ripoff, but it's the S30 Ultra which they've basically just got an S20 Ultra clone, slapped S30 on it, and called it a day. 7.2 inches, which makes it the biggest welcome phone we've had a look at. Not that welcome tablet I had a look at. It's running Android 10, supposedly. The next picture is exactly the same details, except it shows the front with the butterfly on it. That's it. Look at all that shininess and the curves they've put into it. Man, it looks nice. Also, there's 5G just in the corner there, if you haven't noticed already. It's just sitting there. Here's another photo of the device itself, which clearly looks like an S20 Ultra, but they've replaced space zoom with wide zoom. And it has 5G, hello, on there. Hello, how you doing? I'm fantastic, I'm reviewing another welcome device. This is all gonna be fun and great. Uh, it says some information just on the back of the phone there, which you'd think would just be sort of a listing mistake. Nah, it's on the actual phone itself. You wait, you'll see. Just to make sure, there's another picture here that shows that it has 5G. And just to make sure, they have another picture that shows that it has 5G. So, so far we have six photos that show that it has 5G. That's called deception. You also have a picture of the side of the device here with the camera bump. And then the next photo is another photo of the phone in black with the S20 Ultra default wallpaper. The next one is in green with, I'm not sure where that wallpaper stolen from. The next one is a, that was on the Ucatel phone, I think, but it's off another phone I don't quite remember. 
and that's in blue, which is the color I have, and then it is in white. Then we have a group selfie of the S30U lineup with a 7.2 inch drop screen, 16 megapixels plus 32 megapixels. Then we see the big screen phone leading the industry design. The vision is more broad and clear, 19 by nine, a narrower border, large screen display, bring you a better visual feast. We have the full HD and no full HD. And as you can see in the full HD one, the image from Star Wars is kind of cropped. And then in the no full HD, it is severely cropped. So you can tell the difference. I hope you can tell the difference. We have 12 gig plus 512 gig flash memory, 12 gig big memory and 512 gig storage. Ensuring smooth loading of screens. I don't need to read it, do I? You guys have already heard this a billion times before. It's just not afraid of being killed even if hung up for a long time. So there you go. We have the MTK6899 Decacore processor, which snatches red packets faster as per usual. We have the dual SIM plus dedicated micro SD card slot up to 128 gig expandable storage mine actually came with a free 256 gig micro sd card we're gonna test that the 5800 milliamp hour battery enough power makes your day i bet that will last all but two hours but hey you never know prove me wrong we have this next photo here which shows quick specs like the 7.2 inch drop screen face id 5000 milliamp hour battery didn't it say 5800 doesn't matter at this point in time doesn't really matter at all then we have the screen fingerprint unlock under the screen it contains advanced technology innovative screen fingerprints light touch and flash unlock in screen fingerprint. Yeah, we'll, we'll try that as well. If there is ever one day I see a welcome device with an optical fingerprint sensor built into it, I will quit YouTube and walk away. We also have the packing list with the mobile phone cases, the smartphone, the charging line, the adapter charging head, the screen protector mobile manual, headset, and the needle. I got a couple of these, since my one doesn't come with a box or anything like that, but I uh, would have liked to see the adapter charging head. Honestly, it would have been all the same stuff we've looked at before. Generic white box, an AC charger as light as a feather, a USB cable that will probably break in two days, the mobile manual that's full of chinglish, a headset that probably sounds worse than tin cans strapped to your head, and the needle is just a SIM card ejector tool, which I have about a million of, so that's all good. Down to the description, we get to actually see the resolution of the screen, which is 2320 by 1280. Who wants to guess if it's 1280 by 720, 480 by 960, whatever it's going to be? Have a guess. Unique back cover, hot bend 3D electroplated gradient glass back cover. Have we seen that before? Uh, the networks are GSM and... 3G. They also just list 4G and 5G, but no bands, obviously. Uh, we have the features here. If you want to pause and have a read of this, I don't think I need to read through this because it's just the usual stuff that we've all come to love from these listings on Wish and all that sort of thing. But there is a small bit that I will read to you right now. Every contact should not forget everything. Experience the miracles and emotions in life. Feel the fantasy and reality in nature. Be loyal to your love, have the courage to explore unknown and distant places, and record every experience of contact and use of the camera. Thank you for watching. If you like, please click to buy. Thank you. I don't know if that's meant to make me feel wholesome, or if they want to just yeet me into space with a camera. I have no idea. I think you know what's going on now, so let's have a look at the device. Ta-da! Cash Converters was trying to sell it for $119. Luckily, I seen this before they were ready to actually put it out for sale, and I quickly snagged it and said, nope, no one else is going to buy that except me. Also, I did have plans to actually buy an S21 Ultra clone off Wish. However, I purchased it and Wish decided to hold on to my money. I then had to contact my bank, then I had to get a charge back, so then I'd actually get my money back. Thank you, Wish. Much appreciated. I will go back another day and see if I can get it again, but at this point in time, I won't worry about it. So it comes with a case. It comes with a screen protector pre-applied. That's a tempered glass one. It's quite a big phone. Just a bit of a size comparison. There's the S20U I originally had a look at. I mean, it's not too much bigger. That's what she said. As another size comparison, here it is next to an N91. In case in 2021 you're still using an N91, I have this proudly displayed on my desk. Leave me alone. All right, here it is next to an S8. There you go. That might give you a uh, size comparison just there. It's pretty big. So on the front of the phone itself, not a lot going on, except we have a hole punch camera just there, and the speaker grill you can just see just there. And the bezels are kind of hidden by the tempered glass screen protector. The chin is actually not too big. On the sides of the device, we have some volume rockers and a power button. And once again, another thing, like the previous S20 Ultra, is there's a hole built into the frame. Yes, there's a built-in reset button just there. I called it a kill switch in the original S20 Ultra video. You can call it a kill switch if you want, or just a reset button, but basically it just switches off the phone in case there's any issues with it, and then you can just switch it back on again. So if it starts lagging, you just 
kill switch, and then power it back on, problem solved. But yeah, that's, uh, that's a handy little feature. At the bottom of the device, we have a Type-C USB port and two speaker grills. I highly doubt they've put dual speakers into this thing, but hey, you never know. On the other side, we just get our SIM tray just there. And then moving on to the back of the phone, here's our mystifying camera bump just here, the wide zoom 100 times, all the fake cameras just there. There's the real one just there. I wonder how many megapixels that's going to be. But all these other ones are just fake ones, all dud ones. Then we have the flash up there as well. The camera bump is actually not too extravagant. It's actually kind of minimal, only because there's one camera there and they didn't have to pack any more hardware in here. Uh, we have a shiny blue back cover, as you can see there. It's actually kind of nice, I will admit that. What you're wanting to see from the listing is right here. Oh boy. t -Dand to comply, win FCC, Sean Dang, Sean Ding, Sean Ding, technology and Android smartphone. That is featured in the listings and it's printed on the actual back of the fucking phone. It's like, ah, I'm sure people will make sense of it. It's completely fine. And uh, yeah, there it is on the back cover there. I think they just needed to fill the gap just there. So they got some broken English technology words and shoved them on there and they misspelled them. I don't know either. The sides of the phone are made from plastic and the back of the phone is glass. I think it's glass. Popping the SIM tray out of the phone shows us our 256 gig micro SD card that is unbranded and it was free. I'll run this through the program I tested that 8 terabyte hard drive SSD whatever it was off Wish and uh, see what the real capacity is and we'll come back to that later in the video. But we have micro SD card slot and two empty slots for a nano SIM card. Alright I've loaded this thing with my almost full 8 gigabyte micro SD card and a Telstra SIM. Here we go for the first power on of the Wellcom S30 Ultra Plus Mega Edition Welcome thing. It's different this time around, again. What's that stolen from? Have a think. Have a think. LG, life's good. There you go. Different Welcome Boot animation. You'll get to see that in the files that I've put in the description, but yeah, it goes pixelated and blocky and yeah, it looks nice. There you go, we've booted up. Okay. That's stolen off LG as well. All right, so I'll just leave it for a second and see if we get any reception. We can see the bezels a little better. So the chin, not that bad. And then going further up to have a look at the bezels. They're honestly not that bad. I've got to actually say for a shitty welcome device, you're actually getting quite a lot of screen real estate here. Slight problem though, the actual display quality is quite terrible. It's, uh, I think a 480p one, but I'm not too sure at this stage. If we go closer in, you can start to see the icons aren't really crisp. It's definitely not the uh, 1280 display that they say on Wish, but that's okay. That's completely acceptable. Anyways, here we are booted up, swiping down. That looks like lollipop. I'm going to say marshmallow, actually, marshmallow. Let's go marshmallow. I'm feeling confident today. Uh, that's all we have there. On the main screen here, we have a folder for Google. Email Go, Voice Search Go, Maps Go. Please don't tell me that this is running Android Go Edition. In that case, this only has one gigabyte of RAM, which honestly is to be expected on a welcome device. But uh, email, is that, wait, that doesn't look like Go. Hang on a second. This doesn't look like, no, these are just normal applications that they've just labeled as Go. Camera settings, Play Store, phone, Contacts, messages, and Chrome? No, surely. Chrome? That's not Chrome. Scrolling up, we get backup and room. Browser, calculator, calendar, camera, clock, contacts, downloads, email, Facebook, face unlock, file manager, fingerprint, FM radio, gallery, Google, maps, messaging, messenger. Messenger? Oh, okay. Music, phone, Play Store, search, settings, SIM toolkit, sound recorder, voice search, and YouTube. Is that YouTube Go or is it not YouTube Go? No, that's standard YouTube. Oh, okay, doesn't matter. I'm already confused with this. I finally picked up a network. 4G, it says. Let's jump into settings and go through there and set everything up before we have a look at the apps and stuff. Just to see what's going on here. But, oh, oh God. When I did briefly power this on, I did go into settings. If you have a look here, they have decided to not put any spaces between <laughs> majority of the words, like general notification interruptions. Just all there with no space. That's fine. Looks legit. But uh, yeah, we've got a whole bunch of options in here, so let's get through this as quickly as possible. Wi-Fi, can we detect my 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz networks? I always forget that that comes up every time you switch Wi-Fi on. I do have my 2.4 gigahertz network detected, so that's 
good, I guess. Bluetooth. Do we really need to test Bluetooth on these devices? I don't think we need to. Within SIM cards, it just shows my Telstra SIM that's in here and the number that's associated with it, and that's it. In data usage, only just shows Telstra Mobile getting 94 kilobytes right there. Three little dots up here show cellular networks. 4G. Where is 5G? What's going on here? Is this actually a 4G device? Wait for it. This is going to be extremely good if this is a 4G device. Well, not really. It's not really that good. But 4G on a welcome device? Surely this can't be the first one. I was going to say, if it does have 4G, this will be the first welcome device that actually has 4G. Nah, it's 3G. As per usual. That pretty much says it all there. I can try another SIM card, but I have a feeling it is only 3G. In more, we have airplane mode, tethering, and VPN, which is basically just the little menu that we just showed before. In display, we have mirror vision listed. I haven't seen that in a while on a welcome device. So it's good that it's back again. I'm not sure what it does, but there you go. Uh, magazine unlock. Samsung. No. It doesn't have magazine unlock. What are they talking about? Navigation key. Oh, you can change it. Navigation hideable. Wow, look at that. You can get the whole full screen experience now, except you can't use gestures. Let's have a look at the wallpapers. Go on. So that's off a... Not too sure, actually. Not too sure. These are off. Are these off a Huawei or a Xiaomi? I'm not too sure. Orange blobs. Oh, black hole. The last time I seen this was on a Samsung Galaxy Nexus that was running Android 4.1.2. Bubbles, hollow spiral, and phase beam. Okie dokie. I'll just keep it as the default one. Sound and notification. Sound enhancement. Best loudness, best order, and best surround. Everything that you need is right here. Great. Good to know. Storage and USB. Here we go. We have 512 gigabytes of internal storage. Anyone want to guess? 8 gig? 16 gig? Feel free. If I do an instant premiere of this, which I'm most likely going to do, feel free to have a debate and chat now as to what the storage is going to be on this device, or what the actual specs of this device are going to be. In memory, 12 gigabytes of RAM right here, 711 megs in use. In battery, it says we have two hours left. That's good. Uh, I'll just display the battery percentage to watch how fast it drains. In apps, we can have a look through here. I'm going to show system. I am now going to scroll through here. If you see anything that you think is dodgy, feel free to let me know. But otherwise, we'll just scroll through here and see if we see anything. I'm more looking for the Easter egg to see what it says. MediaTek. Well, we know it's MediaTek. Of course we know that. It said that in the listing. Uh, engineer mode, face unlock, factory test. Yep. All that sort of stuff. Google account manager, Google settings, launcher three. Always great to see you there. Messenger, mobile anti-theft. I wonder if that does anything. Phase beam. Oh, yep. Pulled off Android 4.1.2, I think. Or were they on Android 4? I don't know. System UI, that's Marshmallow. Yay, we know it's Marshmallow. Uh, wireless update, why GPS and YouTube? I didn't see anything dodgy in there. Feel free to let me know. Location, we'll just switch that off. That's fine. Security, should we do fingerprint, face unlock, all that? I think we should. Go on, fingerprint, unlock with fingerprint. All right, set up screen lock. We're going to set a pin. We're going to set a secure pin of 1234. 1234. Don't use that as your real pin. All right, now we need to make sure that we locate the fingerprint sensor on the front of your phone. However, this time around, I have a new device to test the fingerprint sensor. It's called one of these cheap styluses that you can find for like a dollar on Wish or something like that. So we're just going to pretend that this is a finger. So we'll go next. There we go. So all we now have to do is just, there we go. Perfect. Working great. Good stuff. Cool. Now we'll just unlock with the amazing power of fingerprint. Look at this. Oh, magic. Just for the whole sake of it. Nice. All right, go on. Face unlock time. Enroll face. I'm going to pull a silly face just so if this gets uploaded to the dark web, uh, they'll have a stupid face instead. So uh, what face can I pull? Okay. Beautiful. So I don't need to pull a silly face after all. Okay. Accounts. We will add an account very, very soon. Google is all the usual bullshit, I assume. Yes, it is. So in language and input, we don't have the frozen keyboard. We just have the standard Android keyboard. Frozen keyboard's only on Android 
four, I think. So this is higher than four. Marshmallow, we already know that. Uh, date and time is incorrect. That's okay, doesn't matter. Scheduled power on and off. No, that's okay. Accessibility. Did that say sensitivity? I did. Quick boot. I wonder what quick boot does. Look at the power off and on. That's um, Android. Is that stolen off Android 8, I think? Oh, we're going to see what quick boot looks like. Go on. Off you go. Waiting for the quick boot. Be funny if it plays something different. Play something different. Aww. That wasn't quick boot at all. Okay, if I wasn't awake now, I'm definitely awake now. Okay, there we go. That was not a quick boot at all, but sure, why not? But why does it say sensitivity? Where's the sensitivity? About phone, here we go. So we have the model number is the S30 Ultra Pro with the MT6899 with 10 cores plus 512 gigs of storage and 12 gigs of RAM. We have the Android version as 10. Security patch level is 2019. And the custom build numbers there and all that sort of thing. Uh, Android version, go on, what? Oh, 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 oh. Why is the one looking blurry? Can I actually turn it? I'm pretty sure, oh, there, that, whoa, whoa, whoa. I had to look on Google because I completely forgot how to do it. Uh, so now we just do this and... Oh, it's a video? Wait, what? It's the marshmallow Easter egg. I've been bamboozled. Well, that was uh, certainly interesting. I thought maybe it would have the actual Android 10 Easter egg on there, but at least it actually had part of the Easter egg. Unlike the MyMate that just had a picture and that was it. I'm going to just come into developer options just now to put the window animation scale down to 0.5. So far, the phone doesn't feel half bad, though. Half bad. I'll leave it at that. Connect to my Wi-Fi. We'll try a system update and see how we go. All right, come on. Is it going to be the latest version? Is the latest version? Are we going to have an update for the first time ever? S20 Plus Ultra Pro. Hang on. This is S20 Plus Pro. Is it an S20 Plus Pro S30 Ultra Plus Pro? I'm confused. It doesn't matter. Checking for updates. Come on. Give me an up... There we go. It's up to date. I mean, it says it up there, but I was just hoping it would come up with an update. Okay, well, there you go. Another phone we can add to the list that doesn't have any updates. But now I'm going to give it a call, just to see if it actually receives phone calls. Because a lot of people ask for that. So I'm going to see. Oh, there we go. All right, this is the earpiece on the S30 Ultra Plus, or whatever it's called. And the microphone on the S30 Ultra Plus thing. Well, there you go. We've answered that question. It can receive calls, but 3G support gets cut off in 2024, one commenter told me, for Telstra. So, while we can still use 3G, let's use it. But I think what we'll do now is jump into the camera test. Because, fun fact, I've already done the camera test. I already know what the camera looks like on this thing. But I'm not going to spoil anything. I'll tell you it's terrible, though. See, look, you can see the faraway aircon, but just shh. I haven't done anything yet. It's a very bare bones camera, as per usual, which I'll just swap to the front one. Stock, usual, welcome app, there's nothing, except for the autofocus noise is a very weird bit it. But in settings though, all looks the same as usual. What does it say? 13, 32 megapixels, yep, that's right. Uh, video is on medium quality, but I said it's a high though, so that's all good. Uh, the front camera is 16 megapixels, yep, 16 megapixels. Video quality is on high. No autofocus on the front camera either. It doesn't even do bit it either. Oh well. Well, at this point in time, we're going to jump to the camera test. I'll show you all the photos and videos that are taken with this thing, and just have an open mind when you see them. Just think of this as a really good $150 device taking really good photos with its 16 megapixel front camera and 32 megapixel rear camera. Enjoy what you're about to see.
And here we are, the rear camera on the S30 Voltra Plus Welcome thing. I'll never remember the name of it again. Uh, there it is there. Do we have autofocus? We do have autofocus, but doing that makes it go extremely laggy. I uh, shouldn't have done that. That's fine. Uh, yep, this, this is the quality. That's maybe like three frames a second there. That's good. Okay, it's back to normal now. Uh, flowers. Don't touch the screen because it's going to autofocus and then make everything go at like three frames a second. That's fine. Now, anti-shake is on and it seems to be working, I guess. It's not that bad. There's the brick wall there. Down to Stuart. See, look. He looks nice and smooth there. See? Finally, the faraway aircon, normal, and then four times. There we go. See, you touch the screen and it just goes laggy. So, uh, that's completely fine. That's normal. Oh, we're recording just like that. Okay, well, this is testing the S30 Plus Ultra 5G Hello Ultimate Edition, doesn't matter, front camera thing. Uh, this is what the front camera looks like. This would be probably 640 by 480 most likely, I would say so. There's the sky, once again. Wow, look, it's changed so much, it's still blue. It's amazing. Also, it looks like there's a pipe going straight through my neck and like severing my head like that, but it's not, it's just the uh, heater outside just there. It's fine, don't worry. Here's Ripley. Hi, she knows I'm outside. Hey, hi. I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Bye. I'm sorry for leaving you. I'm sorry. Oh. People on YouTube like you. And you're getting filmed with the most terrible camera. Well, it's not the absolute worst, it's pretty bad. Oh. And that's Ripley. So what did you think about our 32 megapixel back camera and our 16 megapixel front camera? Pretty good, huh? Yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's really good. At least it records in 720p on the rear camera, but it's still 480p on the front camera. It doesn't matter. We got some very good shots. Beauty mode worked fantastic for me and I still look like an alien. That will never change. In regards to autofocus on this, you press it, nothing happens on a photo. You press it during video and all of a sudden it goes to about two or three frames a second, if that. Uh, I have no idea why that happens. I just press record, tap, and that's it. It's good quality. I'm sure it's just a feature. I'm sure it's a slow motion feature built in. But uh, yeah, all the photos, four times zoom there, and that's basically it, man. Oh, the night shots turned out really good. They turned out really good. You can see absolutely nothing except for fingerprints. Got to clean it again. As I said during the front video test, the pipe looks like it's going straight through my skull, erasing all memories of this welcome device and every other device I've looked at. Well, the good ones are okay, but the welcome ones. They're not changing, are they? They're exactly the same. They're just not getting any better. They're just going backwards. What's the best welcome clone that we've actually had a look at? If we're in Premiere, let me know in the chat now. What's the best one that we've had a look at? Because I actually don't know. I don't remember. During those photos as well, just want to point out the flashlight. Okay? There you go. <laughs> As I said on the previous video, a Samsung S7 S8 notification LED is brighter than this. This does absolutely nothing. All right, now we're on the stretch of just testing, opening up the apps and seeing how they are. I've got Antutu on here. I've got Crazy Taxi. I installed Free Fire. Someone suggested in the last video, Free Fire to install on phones. So I've done that. I've put uh, GTA 3 on here. GTA San Andreas said there's a problem with the package. Whereas on the x it just crashed flat out, so not too sure. Uh, I've got Minecraft on here, and CPU system info, device info, all the usual stuff. We'll forget about the spec applications for now, but I've got Avast on here. I'll just run that just for the whole sake of running it. I mean, it worked once on one of the phones that we've tested. This did find some risks, and that's found a risk already, but we'll, we'll see, we'll see. Oh, it's found two risks. False positives on my um, SD card being the FRP bypasses and stuff. Why did it go from two to one? It's probably gonna say the web shield's off and that's it. Oh, unknown sources enabled. 
wonderful. I'm going to uninstall Ivest because it doesn't do anything. It just hogs the background resources. Browser is not Chrome. It is the shitty browser which we all have come to know and love and wants to access your contacts. And Oh, God, here we are. If I type in welcome phone into Google, hey, I come up. <laughs> hey, I'm relevant on Google. That's kind of cool. Yeah, I just thought I'd Google welcome phones because I've never... Just, I've never Googled welcome phones. Never. We honestly don't need to see much more in here. We've seen this on other devices. If it was Chrome, I'd test it a little bit more, but since it's not Chrome, there's no point. Calculator. Looks like that. Calendar. Looks like that. Clock. Looks like that. Let me know if these are stolen off anything, because I have no idea. Contacts will leave. Device info. Downloads. Email. We've already had a look at. Facebook will want us to log in. That's fine. Face unlock we've tested. File manager. We've already seen. Fingerprint we've already seen. FM radio, go on. We've got to plug in our headphones so we can get... Hang on, I've just realized. It says to start listing plug-in headphones. Uses the antenna, right? I completely forgot. Where the headphone jack at? It ain't here. I would say in the box they would have included USB-C earphones, but I don't think I've actually got some in the past for devices that have only had USB-C on them. Uh, Free Fire, Gallery, Google. We'll just open Google to see what it does. It shows Google. Maps is maps. You're not going to be using this as GPS. Messaging. Messenger, actually, I want to see if it actually opens. It does. So they've installed this by default. There you go. We don't have much left, honestly. Um, music, we can do the audio test. Let's go do the audio test then. BFG Division, as per usual. I'm not expecting anything special, but I want to see if it's got dual speakers or not. No, it's just one single speaker. I am sure that an empty spray can, once you shake it with the ball going around inside of it, that would make better sound than this. And it only got to 101.2, which is about average. It's not very good. It's not dual speakers. We can put the enhancements on. Best loudness and stuff. Oh, well, let's just bump everything up again. Let's just do that. Reverb. Let's do large hall. Let's make it sound horrible. Never mind. Uh, moving on, Play Store. Ah, Play Store. I did try and look for Call of Duty. No dice. I did try to look for Geekbench. No dice there. Asphalt 9. No dice there. So you know what that means? Not two gigabytes of RAM. One gigabyte of RAM. That's what I'm assuming anyways. I don't know if that's true. It could be 1.9 gig and Play Store is going, nah, it's not two gigs, so it's not going to run. I could have tried to install Call of Duty manually, but I have a feeling we'd get pink screen. I basically just want to see the specs of this thing and yeet it out the window. Uh, search. What is search? Okay, so that just bought up a window saying it was signing into my Gmail on this browser thing here, which is a Yahoo search engine. Sure thing. I'll just agree with that. Sound recorder. Does that look any different? It's got the little meter there. If I scream into the microphone, that'll go wee, but don't need to do that. Uh, system info, voice search. I'll try voice search again because I'm connected to Wi-Fi. Connect to Wi-Fi. Hello. Opening Wi-Fi settings. Some, there we go. Nice, it works. Didn't expect it to not work, but sure. Uh, then we have YouTube. Should we just do the YouTube test? Let's get it over and done with. All right, so here we go. We have the Costa Rica in 4K 60 FPS video. Link is in the description to go watch the video. As I always recommend to go watch the video on a good quality screen because it's such a nice video. It deserves to be watched on a good quality screen. However, we're going to watch it at 1080p 60 FPS. Oh, this is going to be fun. Wait for it. There, there we go. Yep, there you go. 1080p 60 FPS right there. Wait. Why? Maybe it's maybe it's okay. Oh no no, it's fine. Yeah, that that's that's good. The colors are all very washed out and stuff. If you kind of just stare at one frame of the video, it looks really really good. But let's bump it down to its native resolution, which I'd say would be 480p, and we'll start that again just to see what it looks like. It'll probably be absolutely fine this time around. There we go, 480p. Looking good. Can I zoom? Oh, there we go. Zoom to fill. There we go. That's not too bad. Uh no no, it's bad. Looking at it, I can see the 480 penis. 480 penis? <laughs> Whoops. 
Well, YouTube does work at 480p. Anything past that is going to result in it being absolutely laggy. But then you have to sort of question, why do you even have this device in the first place? If you are watching this video, hopefully you have not bought this device or even thinking about buying this device. Hopefully I have definitely steered you away from buying this thing. Well, I guess we should do games then. Honestly, it's basically the same as the S20 Ultra that I looked at a couple of months ago, except they put a bigger display on it and said, yep, looks good now. And they've changed the camera bump as well. Uh, so let's start with Crazy Taxi, I guess. Sound? Sounds like it's coming out of here, but it's not. Oh god, the yellow is muted. It's, uh, that's bad. I'm um, 54 today. Well, at least we've got the full screen experience. That's not half bad for a shitty device, but then again, this is $150 and you could get much better phones for that price. Anywho, crazy taxi, here we go. Got to put the music down because I'm going to get copyrighted. Hey, it's playable. Yes, good stuff. I don't even need to pick up a customer. That runs actually really... Oops, uh, yeah, never mind, I'm not gonna pick up a customer, never mind. Uh, yeah, no, this works great! After two devices that were absolutely terrible, well, the XGODY was, uh, reasonable, but the MyMate was... Yeah, that was shocking. Uh, we finally have one that works. Took a couple of devices, but hey, we're all good. Okay, Crazy Taxi is good then. Well, I'm glad to know that this time around, Crazy Taxi is running on the same level as the Dreamcast version does, so it's slightly more powerful than the Dreamcast at this point in time. So let's try Minecraft Trial and see how it goes. Well, they've changed their uh, splash screen for Mojang, or Mohang, or whatever it's called, doesn't matter. Inspirational. Steve. Yes. All is good. It's getting there. There we go. All right. Oh, it's... yeah, it's playable. No, it's not. Nah. So if you look at the sky, it's reasonable. If you look at the ground, it's reasonable, but then anything else just results in it being pretty subpar. So I don't think I really need to show much more for Minecraft. It's, uh, running good. At least Crazy Taxi ran quite well. We'll try GTA 3 then, bump up all the settings to max, and we'll see how it runs. Actually, I should have let that cutscene play out, but that's alright. My hands are all messed up. Yeah? It's not cut off? I'm gonna run straight into vehicles? That's fine. Uh, yeah, this is actually not that bad. If San Andreas ran on here, we would experience some lag. Yeah, I'm not doing so well, but I think you get the general idea that GTA 3 does run. Uh, and it doesn't look half bad. So if you ever found one of these shitty welcome devices cheap for like 20 bucks and you just wanted to use it to play GTA 3, you're all good in that regards. Uh, but let's try this Free Fire thing. I have no idea what genre this is or anything like that. I just downloaded it and we'll see if it does anything. Ooh. Uh, Garena? Oh, accept descriptions. Yes. I hope I got the right one. Someone just said Free Fire and I just went, okay, sure, why not? It's uploading. Oh, it's doing something now. Here we go. I think it's fine now. Bruh, he's naked. He's naked too, but he's got, like, armor. Sorry. Shooter games. It is shooter. Okay. Man, that soundtrack's killer. Okay, so far it's... Oh, Jesus. So far it's been loading for, like, three or four minutes just doing this screen. And there's glitching going over that side of the screen just there. I still don't know what the games go. Okay. Uh, is it open world? Hey, it doesn't run too bad. I'm not sure exactly how it's supposed to run. Um. Oh, okay. Maybe there's going to be more action happening after this screen. Maybe. I don't know. Oh. This is PUBG, isn't it? Except I'm on a surfboard. Wee. Hey, it's not running too bad, though. Wait till we hit the ground. There we go. It's actually not that bad at all. 
Maybe this is optimized for low-end devices or something like that, so you can just pick up any shitty phone and just start playing? Well, I'd say that's okay then. Okay, well now that I've got myself into a match, I'm gonna have to uh, try and complete it, so uh, give me a moment and uh, I'll see how I can do. Yep, I suck at this. I absolutely suck at this. I'm dead. Okay. The game just crashed. I kind of left the torch on and the phone's really, really hot now at the back. That's all right. That's good. Free Fire did work, so that's good. As I said, could be optimized for low-end devices. I'm not too sure because I've never heard of it before. But there you go. I've played it. That's the gaming test. Crazy Taxi run the best, I'd say, followed by Free Fire, GTA 3, and then Minecraft being last. So, about reasonable, I would say. But I think at this point in time, I think we've got a rough idea of what's going on with this device. But we're going to start opening the spec applications to see what the actual specs are. Let's go ahead and open Antutu and see what's in here. I haven't checked Antutu for a while. It's probably not changed. It's probably going to say the same specs. I haven't done a multi-touch test on video in a while, so let's do that. Ooh, five-point multi-touch, huh? That's not too bad. Oh, but in the meantime, we get to see that it's actually a welcome-branded device. Hooray! For the first time, it says welcome. Fucking hell, it took like 30 phones for that to actually happen. Unless it's already happened before, but sure, why not? At this point, I'm satisfied. It's a welcome device. That's its brand. That's all I'm going to say. MT6899, Mali 400 MP, 540 by 1200 display, 32 megapixel rear camera. RAM appears to be 2 gigabytes. That's interesting. Quad core, I'd say it's an MT6580 for sure. Mali 400 MP, false cameras. Uh, Android SDK version 23, that's gonna be Marshmallow, because we've already seen it's Marshmallow, it doesn't support anything, a whole bunch of sensors that it doesn't support, oh, it's got a light sensor, alright, moving on to, what else have we got, device info hardware, come on, show us the specs, 1200 by 540 is the display, it says flash size is 512 gig, but then it shows the flash module just above it, it also shows 12 gig of DDR3 1066, MediaTek 6899WP, Mali 400MP, welcome S30 Ultra Prime, glad it says welcome, Marshmallow, there we go, 12 gig still, camera, 16 megapixel, 32 megapixel, no, okay, let's try the one that usually shows everything, which I'll link all of these down in the description below, so you can check these out on your own device if you have any doubts, uh, so this is the one that's going to show everything, hopefully. See? It says S20 Plus in the build version, but then here it shows S20 Plus, so they've just rebranded it. Typical welcome. MT6580, there you go. Android 6. Ah, oh, good stuff. Yep, quad core. 16 gig of internal storage, so we have 16 gigs of internal storage. Not half bad. It's better than that Xcode I reviewed recently. Uh, total RAM is 2 gig, so Call of Duty may have run on this, potentially, but we have 2 gigs, so it's not half bad. The system doesn't run half bad, because we've got that 2 gigabytes of RAM. That's helping ever so slightly. Uh, the screen size is also inaccurate, that's CPU system info for you. 540 by 1280, was it, or 1200? So 540p the screen is. Better than 480p, though. The battery is 100 milliamp hours. Kind of feels like that sometimes. Uh, CPU temperature and battery temperature are exactly the same. Sensors, we've only got three of them. Cameras, two megapixel and two megapixel. Yeah, that's about right. There's nothing better than having a front two megapixel camera and a rear two megapixel camera in 2021. We're going to forget about the phone for just five seconds. We're going to concentrate on the 256 gig micro SD card that was included in this. I am now going to run a test on this and see what it comes up with. So I'll be back in a second. And the results are in for the SD card. It is only a 16 gigabyte micro SD card. 27.5 gigabytes has been lost. So sadly it's not a 256 gig micro SD card, just a 16 gig one. I thought it may have got to 32 gigabytes, but 16's as far as we got. Well, at this point in time, we know the specs. MT6580. They're never going to change, are they? Just please give me something better than MT6580. For just once, please welcome. You're actually called Welcome, that's what it says on the phone, it's actually Welcome. Surprising. Uh, 2 gigabytes of RAM, which is not half bad. 16 gigabytes of storage, a 540p display, 
For a 7.3 inch display at 540p, it's pretty terrible though. It's not the worst I've seen, but it's far from being the best I've seen. The cameras are only two megapixel each. It's basically just the S20 Ultra that they've rebranded as the S30 Ultra, and that's basically it. There's nothing different. Don't buy this device. It's another welcome device, another generic unbranded device. You don't want to put your personal stuff on here and use it as a daily driver. It's just made with parts from here and there. It basically runs like a phone from about six to seven years ago, maybe even more. We're in 2021 and it's still got 3G and 3G networks are closing down in a couple of years and there you go. But we've got apps that are described wrong and there's just a mishmash of things going on. Basically, the end result is this is another phone you don't want to buy. When we eventually get to a welcome phone that is worth buying, I'll let you all know. But until that day comes, this is another heap of garbage, unfortunately. But that's basically it for the test of this. We'll shut it down. Oh, there we go. It's going to shut down now. All right, good. Life is good. Well, I don't think there's anything else I need to do to it, really. Except tear it down. Look at the little fingerprints. Whoa. So since this has a glass back, we have to be really careful with removing the glass back. We'll just stick our pry tool underneath the glass, slide it under a little bit, and problem solved. Oh boy, this is going to be fun. Show me the insides. I'm not looking. Oh dear lord. What the f fuck is that? Wait, 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 hold up, hold up. Is this actually where they've printed? The stuff on that goes through the... No, surely not. What is this? What purpose do you serve? Oh, yeah, it is. There it is. It's see-through now. So they just put some holographic tape on there and go, yep, quality. Good stuff. Uh, we have a battery there. I will Google that battery and let you know what it is. I'll list it just down there below. I would say, just looking at it, probably a 2,500 milliamp hour battery. Maybe, if that, if we're lucky. I'll just lift it up and see if there's anything listed on there. Nope, nothing. All right. Also, the construction. It's looking good. So there we go. We've got our camera bump just here, which... Oh, okay. Uh, we'll just pop that off like so. There we go. That's our frame just there. Nothing spectacular. Put that there. Machined aluminium once again for our camera bumps. And we have the board. Actually, hang on a second. Hold up. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? You guys have asked for this for a very, very long time. I think this is the first time we have a phone that we can swap parts with. But it looks like that this motherboard that's in the S20 Ultra, S30 Ultra, Welcome, who knows what it is, is the same motherboard or the same sort of looking motherboard as the one on the Xgo. So let's just have a look. Let's just see what happens side by side. There you go. Okay, it's not exactly the same. So what I want to do is try and use the Type-C USB port on the Xcody and see if that works. I know that I'm too lazy to take out the one on the Xcody, but uh, this is completely fine. Uh, I think it works. Hang on, let's see if it plays a startup noise out of that speaker. We have parts. <laughs> okay then. Have we just done a Mad Hacks upgrade to Type-C USB for this? Let's have a look and see if we have. Oh, it has a question mark. Oh no, wait, no, 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 hang on. Try that again. Yep. It's charging. There we go. It's charging with the Type-C. <laughs> USB port. Okay, well now we definitely know that they're all just repurposed boards in the end. Okay. Okay, let's try something else. So the camera in the S30U is just that one just there. Just a little guy. There are some codes on there if you can see them. But there you go. So we're going to go ahead and put the x Godi camera, which is basically the same camera, in the S30U and see how it goes. Let's see if it works. Oh yeah, quick boot eventually did work, by the way. There you go. Uh, there's no sound because um, I've taken the speaker out. So let's see if the camera works. Oh! Wait. Wait for it. Nah, I'm sitting here on a blank screen, unfortunately. So that's a no-go. What about the S30 camera on the Xcody? Well, it's not a perfect fit, but you know what? It's close enough. All right, go on. Let's see if this works. 
Alright, what do you think, fellas? Placey bets? Go on. Is it gonna work? No. Okay. So we can put Type C into the Xcody, but I think the true test is can we get the display from the S30U to work on the Xcody? There's only one way to find out. Uh, there's a sticker there that says 2 gig plus 16, B1 plus B2 plus B5. I don't know if you can see that just there, that blue one, but there you go, that basically confirms the specs. I'm going to stop tearing the shielding off because um, I'm killing devices by doing this. I'll go off by the Samsung flash module that was specified in Device Info Hardware, I'll go off that. Uh, and the MT6580, which obviously we know, I'll go off that and I'll go off this sticker as well, so I think we know what's going on. There's also an unused connector just there. That's probably for a fingerprint on another model. The front camera has a different connection to the one on the x -Cody. They're not exactly the same motherboard, but theoretically, the board should fit straight into here. A lot of you have asked for these frank and welcome phones. I'm glad that I'm finally getting around to doing it. It was kind of unexpected, but here we are. Let's give it a go. So there's our motherboard from the S30U. Yeah, I won't take the shielding off just in case. But the front camera has a little code just there, if anyone wants to Google that. Is that the exact same code as the... It's Yeah, it says 2M plus XX, which was on the Xcody one anyways. But this sort of just proves that Xcody is basically just welcome, but slapping a brand name on it and that's it. But it's all basically coming from the same factory, I would say. So I'll put that to the side. All right, the question is, will the Xcody board fit in this frame. It is a little bit off, unfortunately, because of the chips underneath, so what they'd have to do is cut out more of this frame in order for this to fit. It at least sits there. That's more than enough for me to just quickly test this. This is so janky. That's all right, it doesn't matter. There we go, Xcody board in this S30 Plus frame. Let's see if we get anything. Oh. May need to reset the connector. Nah. It vibrates, and that's it. While not a perfect fit, at least we got to try it. All right, one last test, go on. Let's see if this works. The x Godi frame, let's put the motherboard from the S30U in here and see if it does anything. Uh, it's not really a good fit, but let's see if we actually get a display. Lights up. That's it. Ah, uh, it was worth a shot. Worth a shot, man. Worth a shot. Yes, you can interchange parts from one welcome phone to another, depending on the models and all that sort of thing. While we could put the camera and the display and all that, that didn't work. The only thing that did work is the Type-C USB port from the S30 on the XGOD. But maybe one day we'll try a full-on Frank and welcome phone thing. If anyone wants to see that, I'll just get every welcome phone I have, put it on the desk, and we'll just try and build one and just see what happens. Maybe we could integrate it into a job lot, make the next job lot building the ultimate welcome phone. That would actually be really, really interesting, but there you go. As I said, with this one, I'm not going to tear it down any further. I'm going to put it back together, see if it works, give you the specs, give you the final conclusion if we need to go through that again, and call this one a video, I think. So I guess we just put that down like that. And then we just put that down like that, put the SIM tray back in there, put the case on it, and that's it. There we go. That's back to life. So if you want to learn the specs, I'll just push everything out the way. But that is the specs of the S30 Ultra Plus, which is also the S20 Ultra Plus, but it's been renamed to the S30 Ultra Plus and got a slight cosmetic makeover, and it's basically the same as the last one I looked at. But hey, maybe the next welcome phone will be a lot better. If you all think I should go for an S21 Ultra clone of Wish, please let me know, and I will go ahead and try and purchase it again, and hopefully Wish doesn't hold my money again, unless I get it off AliExpress, which that actually might be a better option. But I like taking a gamble on Wish, because of the stupid specifications, you just never know what you're gonna get. Sometimes on AliExpress, they do tell you the specifications, and I kinda wanna keep that a mystery. If you guys wanna see that, let me know. I'm more than happy to try and work it out. But I did try. I did try purchasing it, and then Wish took my money and charged backs, and that's all fun. But anyways, that has been the Welcome S30 Ultra Plus, whatever the hell it is. I hope you enjoyed this for what it was. Once again, the video has gone way over time, but there is the timestamps that are integrated into the video as well as the description and my pinned comment so you can skip to wherever you'd like. But if you're in the premiere, hello, how you doing? I uh, hope you enjoyed this one. And if you're watching this after the premiere, 
Hello, how you doing? I hope you're doing well. That's basically it for this one. I'm gonna probably do a factory reset later. I'll just chuck it in the cupboard for now and call it a day, I think. And as I've made it perfectly clear with all of these welcome devices, I buy these things so you don't have to. I endure the pain and the torture and the suffering of these things so you don't have to. So thank you very much for joining me along the way of this fingerprint magnet that I've had to clean several thousand times over this video. But that's alright, we'll do that again. But once again, thank you very much for watching, I really do appreciate it, and I thank you all for the support. As always, take care, stay safe, be good people, and I'll see you all in the next one which I'm not too sure what that is at this point in time, but I'm sure I'll work it out. Now I've just got a whole bunch of parts all over my desk that I've got to clean up. Fun. If you like this content, feel free to leave a like or a dislike if you didn't. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next video.